We begin this with breaking news now from Rafa. The Israeli army has warned all residents and displaced people to leave the eastern neighborhoods of Rafa. It says they must move to the Al Mawasi area near the coastline. That's ahead of what it says will be the use of extreme force in the eastern part of the city. More than one and a half million people have been sheltering in Rafa after the Israeli army forced them out of northern and central Gaza. Well, we're joined uh, now by Hani Mahmoud, who's in Rafa in southern Gaza. Hani, what's happening there on the ground right now? Yes, we're well, following an intense night of uh, extreme uh, airstrikes, relentless airstrikes across the eastern and the central part of Rafah city uh, caused the uh, the murder of 20 people so far, mostly women and children. The Israeli military, as early hours this morning, issued statements along with uh, a map for evacuation. The orders are very extreme, very sharp, and used intimidating language describing what's going to happen in the eastern part of the city, as with, along with the use of extreme force and an extreme op military operation is going to take place at the eastern part of Rafah city. That includes all the area eastern of Salah al-Din Road and almost close to the center uh, Rafah city that's at the western uh, part of Salah al-Din Road that will include definitely Rafah crossings. And as of yesterday, we we learned that Karma Salim crossing has been completely shut down. And the operation right now that, in, that is included, uh, Rafah crossing right now, including in the evacuation orders, will be uh, closed as soon as the operation is started in the eastern part of Rafah city. People are in a state of panic and in shock, despite that they expected that to happen, but did not expect it to happen rapidly. Uh, we, we were approached by people who asking about where are the evacuation zones, and we looked at the maps, and what, what we've seen so far, it stretches from the central area, from Dir al-Balah city, uh, all the, passing it through Khan Yunus, mainly in the central part of Khan Yunus and the western part of Khan Yunus, all the way to the evacuation zone here in western part of Rafah city. These are the three major areas. The uh, this, the uh, the leaflets designated as safe areas uh, in which they will be receiving, according to the leaflet uh, uh, dropped by the Israeli military. According to this leaflet, it says this is where all the humanitarian support will be directed. Uh, that is something indicating, as many people reacted to this, that this operation is going to be long and it's, un, it's unclear without any time frame when it's going to, uh, to end. Uh, and that's what's going on right now on the ground. People have started to, uh, to move uh, toward the central area and the, uh, the western part of, of Rafah city. Uh, it's important also to point out the past three days uh, witnessed the uh, a quiet evacuation sort of people who uh, somehow predicted that the, the talks in Cairo about the ceasefire were not making any solid progress and the Israeli military, uh, uh, in light of the growing threats of expanding the operation into Rafah city, they started to move quietly uh, to areas that are not designated by the Israeli military as safe zones given the past failures of the Israeli military to assure that these evacuation zones are in fact safe. Well, indeed, given that throughout this war on Gaza, as you say, there haven't been any so-called safe areas, what is the mood there now to this news? I mean, how are people going to cope? It's a quite distressing right now, and we could we could see and we could tell how worried people, how concerned they are. There is a state of panic. People who have already lost family members that they were told to move to evacuation zones are recalling these times when they were ordered sharply to move to certain designated areas as safe zones, only to get killed and bombed and killed in those areas, whether here in Rafah city or the central area or uh, in, in the city of Khan Yunis. There is a huge level of mistrust now in the, the Israeli narrative in terms of evacuation zones. And uh, what people are reacting to this is there, you can't create a safe zone in a war zone. The entire Gaza Strip is, is being relentlessly bombed, whether it's here in overcrowded Rafah city all these past months. Uh, and in, in despite the 
the calls for the, the ground in, invasion, which seen by and perceived by many people as a distraction, because at the same time, the Israeli military was extremely bombing uh, Rafah city to the point where the destruction is quite visible in all the roads uh, across this overcrowded uh, city. There are rubbles that are filling the roads everywhere, destroyed homes are everywhere. So Rafah hasn't been safe at all within the past seven months and since the, uh, the initial weeks of, of this genocidal uh, war. So that's where people are not buying this new narrative of evacuation zone because there isn't any evacuation zone at all. And the bombing included public facilities, honorable facilities, uh, hospitals, and we've seen how hospitals were stormed and we're, they came under military siege for the past months. Now, it's important to point out right now that part of the evacuation orders included a Najjar hospital at the eastern part of Rafah city. It's part of the evacuation and the, the leaflet clearly says that the hospital should be uh, evacuated. Okay, honey, for now, thank you. Well, Zain Bozravi is on the phone for us now from Ramallah in the occupied West Bank. Uh, Zain, a terrifying situation on the ground in Gaza there, but how is this likely to feed into the ongoing ceasefire talks? Well, all of this follows an Israeli playbook we've seen before in this conflict and others. The order for people to move came after a night of intense Israeli bombing on Rafah, which followed attacks targeting the areas in and around Rafa for days. So this is an escalation. We've seen the same thing happening in the West Bank. Escalation, longer than usual raids in the West Bank. Tilkarim is experiencing that this morning. We've seen the use of shoulder-mounted anti-rockets, uh, anti-tank rockets on people's homes. This is an escalation we're seeing. So there's all this military escalation in parallel to the talks, and it makes you think it is either to try and negotiate from a position of strength, or it could be lip service to negotiations as a distraction to be able to carry out these operations and complete the objective that the Israeli government laid out at the beginning of this war, which was to end Hamas's role, uh, completely end Hamas's influence and presence in Gaza. Now, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has been clear. We have to remind people that he has been clear for, for many, many days and weeks now that going into Rafah will happen whether there is a deal uh, with Hamas reached or not. And that is something negotiators involved in these talks Aid agencies, every uh, UN organization has warned would cause enormous suffering and hinder and perhaps completely negate any prospect of a breakthrough in the hostage talks. But it seems from his actions that he has made his decision. Same as Ravi for now. Thank you. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.